Brother Pat for having me uh, come home today to speak. You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. Now, if you're friends with me on Facebook, you may have seen me uh, use this quote a few times um, as a status. I posted it again only recently. It's a famous quote by St. Augustine in, um, in his Confessions, and for me, it sums up my discernment journey thus far, and is an expression of our purpose and natural end as sons and daughters of Christ. You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. Now I share this with you because with today being the Good Shepherd Sunday, our parish feast day, um, happy feast day. The church recognizes this day as a time to pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood. It is also an opportunity to reflect on the gift of the priesthood and thank our own shepherds, our great example being Brother Pat, who selflessly gives him of himself and who has a voice which we all recognize and hopefully follow. Thanks be to God. As you know, I'm a seminarian in my third year studying for the priesthood. And Brother Pat invited me earlier this week to share some insights into seminary life and my personal discernment story. To cut a uh, long story short, 10 years prior to, to me submitting my application to enter seminary, quite a few people would say things like, you would make a great priest. I distinctly remember awkwardly laughing at old ladies um, who would say such things and I would cease the opportunity to tell them of my plan, which was to become famous, to look after my parents, to get married, and have 10 kids. I was heavily involved in the life of the church too, so I shrugged off these constant comments as natural assumptions due to my love of God and church involvement. 10 years later, here I was submitting my application to the seminary. 2014 was a year I seriously started to discern the priesthood. Not because I didn't find the perfect girlfriend, but rather because I could no longer resist this strange call upon my life. Now I say strange because for me, things were actually going great. I didn't have everything I wanted, but God definitely blessed me abundantly. And why would anyone want to change that? However, I was somewhat restless. The reality for me though, and for everyone, is that God knew me before he knitted me in my mother's womb, as said in Psalm 139. In knitting me, he wove into me a dignity and purpose, innate in every human soul, and then gifted the gift of free will to discover his wonders and truths for ourselves. This encouraged me to start going on retreats. I sought a spiritual director who helped me grapple with my confusion. I started frequenting the sacraments. Um, I made inquiries to the vocations office. I went to the Holy Land, I went to God Youth Day, and I started to attend um, daily mass. And I, I started to pray a daily holy hour. Um, with, so the two latter that I just mentioned being the most effective um, in allowing me to cultivate a time of prayer in dialogue with God. In our gospel today, Jesus is talking about being the good shepherd. In it, he says, the sheep follow their shepherd because they recognize his voice. Now, I'm not saying I have a direct line with God, but without silence and prayer, discernment and recognizing his voice would have been impossible. And I share this as a key to dis in discerning um, your core in life, whatever it may be. Silence, prayer, and the sacraments are essential, especially in our busy lives. Jesus, at the end of this gospel, um, says, the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The reason why it took me 10 years to discern entering the seminary wasn't because I didn't recognize his voice, but it was because I was struggling with the false sense of unworthiness beating my chest and telling God that I wasn't good enough, pretending, which prevented me from um, taking this step. What helped me in this area was knowing that the difference between 
God calling us by name and the devil calling us by our sins. We only have to look at scriptures and the lives of the saints to know that God equips the cord and the devil will do anything to stop it. Really, no one is worthy, but by the grace of God, he still calls us. Taking the step to enter seminary to now discern with the church, although difficult at times, has been the most life-giving decision I've made and experienced so far. I thank God for my brother seminarians and my formators. Now there's a lot of misinformation about seminaries out there to which even I subscribed before entering, which can only be squashed by actually visiting the place. So if you'd like to come for lunch, obviously after the uh, COVID restrictions are lifted, just send me a Facebook message and I'll gladly have you over for lunch. To wrap up, I just want to thank you. To thank our parish community for praying for me and ask that you please continue to do so. Please be assured that you too are also in my prayers, especially during this pandemic. As with the church, I ask you to pray for all seminarians around the world and ask that you also pray for young people, that they take heed of wherever God is calling them and that their hearts are opened to his love and mercy. I hope my discernment journey encourages you, um, you all, to take up the step, take up this step and plunge yourselves into the deep. And if you have any questions, um, as I said before, we have great shepherd here. You know, I speak to Brother Pat, speak to myself, or um, there's plenty of sisters, uh, consecrated um, sisters that we have here in our community. Don't be afraid. You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. God bless.